Okay, so I'm Sergey, and I'm presenting our uh, paper, Secure Messaging, which is an SOK paper. And uh, this was done in joint work with Nick Onger and Ian Goldberg from the University of Waterloo. Joseph Bonneau, uh, who was in Princeton at that time, and now in Stanford, and Sasha Fahl, Henning Pearl, Matthew Smith, and me uh, from the University of Bonn. Okay, so what was uh, the motivation for our work? So there, since the Snowden revelations, there is an increasing demand for secure messaging. About 90% of the people are aware about uh, the mass surveillance and also like 65% of the people uh, also have uh, concerns about that. And many users uh, came to the EFF to ask which messengers uh, they should use. So uh, for you uh, people in the research, if your friends ask you which messenger should I use, what would you reply? And yeah, so this definitely has a relevance for uh, the academia. And uh, the thing is that recently more than 100 tools have been proposed and implemented. Uh, and they are offer, offered in the Android market, which was evaluated by the EFF scorecard. But in academia, there are just a few uh, papers focusing on messaging. And all those tools and uh, messengers, uh, they focus on individual uh, threat models and features. Um, yeah. And there are some messaging specific uh, research challenges. Um, and we found in our paper that some academic work is completely ignored in practice, but also the other way around, some uh, tools which are implemented are, have never been evaluated uh, in an academic fashion. So our goal is to present an overview over uh, the whole topic of secure messaging and also to propose an evaluation criteria like um, a scorecard for academics where uh, the different concepts are uh, compared against each other. So, of course, with, uh, in terms of security, but also we consider usability and adoption. With adoption, we mean sometimes there might be some scalability problems in practice for some providers which would use uh, such systems. And yeah, in the end, we highlight some research challenges and new uh, perspectives. So, uh, like every SOC paper, uh, there should be a huge table which is discussed uh, uh, in the paper. Um, but we noticed that there are uh, three completely orthogonal uh, problem areas covered by most of the messengers, which is first uh, the trust establishment. So if we get a key, how can we know that the key belongs to uh, the one we talk to? Then we have the conversation security. That's where all this crypto uh, stuff is happening. Uh, like encrypting messages, signing messages, uh, and uh, for instance, if we use forward security, do some um, key exchanges. And also the transport privacy, if we want to hide who is communicating with whom, we want to hide all this uh, metadata. Okay, so let's start with, uh, with a trust establishment. Um, here we have a table. Uh, I don't have uh, time to talk about this uh, table in detail, but what you can see in there is that the black circles note that some features are provided by a concept and uh, the minus means that it's not provided. And what can be seen in this table that if we consider the columns, which are the features, and there is a pillar uh, with usability, there is no approach offering both security and usability. So it's always a trade-off to offer security and usabil or usability. So the state of the art in practice is like most of the messengers uh, are like a trusted party and they offer some key directories and uh, the server tells you which key is used by uh, the other uh, participant. And there is also manual verification, which is mostly optional. It's not like the messengers required to do authentication. Um, so if we look at manual verification, either we compare some fingerprints or we scan a QR code, but we could also do uh, like um, some zero knowledge protocol where someone uh, proves that he knows a secret. And uh, yeah, uh, this optional verification thing, there is a tool uh, named Threema, 
they have like three different states, like the red light means that uh, someone is not authenticated at all, this orange light means that the server did this authentication and the green light is when you scan a QR code. But if we look at this, uh, at the academic approaches and um, related security topics like uh, the web, there is certificate transparency, which uh, it, uh, could also work for messaging, but there is no tool out there uh, implementing uh, certificate transparency. But the big advantage of the transparency is that it doesn't require any involvement of the user. And um, yeah, in this case, uh, the application would decide whether a key should be trusted or not trusted. And in the end, if someone will be hacked or uh, his key will be replaced, the user or the owner of the key will get a message that someone tries to manipulate his keys on the key server. So, but there are some practical issues and that's why some uh, companies still uh, are reserved to this approach and it's like uh, what if some end users get this message because they misused the system, uploaded a new key and then they claim that the company replaced this key. Or what about uh, other key changes uh, like a user change the keys all the time, reinstall the apps and so on. But there is also multi-device management if someone uses uh, an extra key for every device. and. If we upload something to a key directory which is accessible by the world, uh, we also have some uh, privacy issues. In our paper, uh, we covered some work from each of this area and uh, yeah, we don't have time to go in detail. There also are some alternative solutions used in practice like Keybase, uh, OneName, Namecoin, um, and they never received an academic review. So talking about the second uh, problem area is like conversation security on the, uh, when, where we actually secure the messages. Here, uh, the basic features are confidentiality, integrity, and authentication of the message, but also like we want to provide forwards and backward uh, secrecy. But compared to the web, uh, messaging mostly is asynchronous. So if you think about email, uh, emails, if you write an email and get a response a few days later, um, so users are not online at the same time, but they also might use some unreliable connections like on their mobile phone where they have reception and then they lose reception and so on. And most of the protocols in the conversation security, once we have uh, done this uh, trust establishment phase, they don't require any interaction at all. Uh, so uh, those kind of uh, features, we, uh, in this kind of protocols, we have only black circles uh, for uh, usability. So, but talking about forward secrecy, um, it's pretty easy in the web. We just do a Diffie Hel authenticated Diffie-Hellman key exchange and that's it. Um, but most uh, messaging tools in practice, they don't use uh, or they try to avoid uh, forward secrecy for messaging because of those asynchronicity where uh, it's not always possible to do an end-to-end -end connection to the other users. So that's why most of the tools, they either don't support uh, forward secrecy at all, or they just require uh, a synchronicity like OTR does, where you are able to communicate uh, securely if both people uh, are online. And uh, there also are some tools which give a kind of uh, forward secrecy. Um, but in the wild, there actually is a tool, a, a, a tool like Text Secure and Pond. They implement the Axolotl uh, protocol, which is probably unknown in the academia, and there is just little work uh, for an academic review for that protocol. But wait. Uh, Scientists in the 70s, or they claim to have uh, solved that solution in the 70s. Um, that's not the case uh, for asynchronous uh, forward secrecy, but uh, there is a paper uh, from the year 2003 where they solved it, but this uh, protocol or this approach of uh, cryptography has never been considered in practice, showing once again that uh, even though we solved uh, something uh, in research, 
it doesn't get implemented. And there will be a talk uh, later in the afternoon uh, for puncturable encryption, which uh, even um, improves this hierarchy IBE approach of uh, Canetti and all. Yeah. So what are the remaining uh, challenges for uh, the conversation security? So most of the work now focuses on group chats. So here we still have uh, to implement forward secrecy, but we also want some features like uh, deniability or transcript consistency. So, and uh, there is this last uh, problem area, the transport privacy. Here we want to protect all the metadata and uh, yeah, the, uh, unfortunately the bad news is that only a few tools uh, actually, uh, actually try to solve this thing. Most of the tools, they just focus on conversation security that uh, we can't read the content of the messages, but in this case, uh, there are only two practical tools which are used by some users, and it's Pond and BitMessage. Um, most of those tools also uh, have some implications on usability and adoption. So if you, for instance, use Pond, you have uh, message delays. If you send a message, uh, the recipient uh, receives uh, this message um, a few minutes later, which might not work for an instant messaging protocol. Also, some scalability issues like with uh, a bit message where everything is solved via br basically broadcasting every message and uh, the recipient tries to decrypt all the messages. And there is also a spam and flood, uh, flood uh, abuse, um, which is dealt in Pond and in uh, BitMessage. Um, the thing is that if you send messages anonymously then and don't see uh, the recipients or the senders of the message and also don't see the content, then someone might just send uh, out messages and you need to cover this. And uh, yeah, you also, probably need some a, a private contact discovery because uh, even though uh, you secure all the messages they uh, the contact discovery might still leak some other data okay so uh, what are the takeaways so we presented a survey and a systematization of uh, the whole area and we found many uh, unconsidered approaches from both worlds so some uh, approaches which have been dealt with uh, in academia but not in uh, practice and the other way around. And we have an appeal for more academic analysis uh, in this area uh, so it should be similar to SSL and Android research where most of the proposal, uh, proposals and practice also received some academic reviews. So reach out to developers and security proofs are not enough. We have plenty of time for questions. So while we're waiting for people to come to the mic, when do you think we're going to get multi-party OTR? Pardon? When do you think we're going to get multi-party OTR? Um, I'm not sure about that, but in a few years, probably. <laughs> in a few years. Uh, there is a tool. Uh, it uh, offers similar features to the multi-party OTR, and it's uh, Tech Secure, where they basically um, yeah, do a kind of broadcast approach. So uh, you send a message to a server, secured with, or encrypted with everyone's a recipient's key, and uh, yeah, use uh, the key material from the two-party thing, and it's a kind of multi-party OTR, which already works in practice, uh, but doesn't cover all the features uh, provided by uh, the actual multi-OTR paper. Uh, you started out saying that there, uh, post Doden, there is a demand for secure end-to-end -end messaging. Um, uh, really? I, I, I'm curious where, you, where the demand is coming from. Um, I didn't understand your question. 
You started your talk by saying that post Snowden, there is a demand for end-to-end -end secure the, uh, messaging. It's based on a study. It was not our uh, result. So, um, yeah, many people uh, I interviewed or uh, talked to, they said they would like to use something, but most of the tools like uh, Threema are... Uh, they wouldn't use it because most of uh, they can't reach everyone from their uh, contact list. But most of the people would say, um, "Yeah, why not?" They would use it if it they if they couldn't use it like WhatsApp. Okay, so it's not like you've had lots of your friends say, "Let's start doing secure messaging." But because I haven't. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm just curious. I, I think the lady actually stood up before me, so. Oh, sorry. Uh, Cami Vanier, um, Indiana University. One of the things that I deal with when I'm teaching introductory uh, computer science or computer security class to students is they're always asking, oh, I've just found this new app. And I would now, I think it says it's secure. I think I'm going to install it and use it. How do I make this sort of judgment call? And one of the things I thought were really interesting is you had three components that you were breaking this into. How applicable do you think this would be as something you could, say, teach the beginning level security people as a framework for trying to determine whether or not their new WhizBang app is actually secure or not as a systematic way to go through it? Yeah, so in our paper, we extracted some concepts which have been used in practice uh, and described those so uh, when teaching, you could explain those approaches. So we didn't cover something like RSA, we covered like asymmetric crypto was the concept and there is also the concept of like in forward secrecy when you do a key exchange it doesn't matter whether you use the P. Hellman or something else. So here uh, we covered all those high level concepts. Hi, um, I'm Nadim from India. I was just wondering, um, regarding the uh, group messaging, like multi-party OTR group messaging protocols, uh, there have been actually, to my knowledge, a lot of protocols that do accomplish this sort of uh, group messaging. Um, the Axolotl protocol as implemented in TechSecure being one of them, but also uh, other protocols. And basically the way they work is that um, they have a common key, and then they uh, share that key, they encrypt it multiple times and send it over and then they, you can use it to decrypt the message. But however, um, one key uh, element that these um, protocols have, have been unable to secure is, trans is uh, transcript consistency. Yeah, um, it's not solved yeah. uh, up to yeah, so. now, so it's uh, still a remaining challenge. So we covered that in the paper. I didn't have too much time uh, to talk about transcript uh, consistency but uh, it's still an open challenge because uh, it's especially challenging for uh, usability because you somehow need to show that. So the transcript consistency is not hard on the level to find that, but to present that to the user. It, it does become more of a relevant issue when you have multiple people as opposed to just two people. You want to ensure consistent consistent conversation. Okay, thanks. So uh, I have a question about the end-to-end -end point of view of security. And I'm sort of building on the, the question about, you know, oh, my students saw an app. Is it secure? Um, if you don't know the provenance of that app and that it was correctly implemented, your list of what protocols it implements seems kind of uh, vacuous <laughs> in that if there are bugs in it, it doesn't matter if it implements AES or whatever. Um, did you consider looking at the end-to-end -end issues and the, the reliability of a given implementation of the software in your analysis? Yeah, we did consider that, but not in this paper. 